basically that that was my reaction. I, I know I have no control over what happened and I can't change anything. So I'm just gonna focus on what I can do next. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the 180th episode of the Athletes Podcast. Today, we have the honor of featuring Mr. Alexander Caron. This is the first time he's really spoken since CrossFit when he was removed from competition in the semifinals, unfortunately due to injury or what CrossFit deemed as an injury. As you'll hear during this episode, he gets into it. He's pretty stoic, uh, but this is a conversation that you don't want to miss. If you are a CrossFit fan, obviously there's controversy going on in the sport. This is the first time he's spoken. We're honored to share that with you here today. If you haven't heard in the sports world, the Vegas Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup completing a victory over the Florida Panthers, 4-1. to Crazy injuries coming out of that series. Matthew Kachuk, broken sternum, played in the third game with a broken sternum. Craziness, maybe the fourth game. Aaron Ekblad suffered a dislocated shoulder, broken foot in the Boston Bruins series, played the next three rounds. Craziness, uh, shout out to the Vegas Golden Knights for winning the Stanley Cup. Second, if you guys also didn't hear, NBA champions, Denver Nuggets, defeated the Miami Heat, four games to one. Also, uh, Jokic, wins MVP was guy was phenomenal uh, legitimately probably one of the best players to have ever played the game and I say that he's only 28 years old 27 28 years old I think he's got a lot of room still to grow play this game they have a young core in Denver Aaron Gordon Jamal Murray shout out to our Canadian boy last but not least we do also have to give a shout out to Nick Taylor Canadian boy also a British Columbia golfer who just successfully won the RBC Canadian Open, winning it for the first time in 69 years. Another Canadian bringing home that title. What a wicked weekend in sports. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to the 180th episode of the Athletes Podcast that's brought to you by Rooted. If you haven't seen them, this is their multivitamin. This is immunity, hydration, energy, three times the electrolytes, 24 vitamins and minerals, nine superfoods and probiotics, all coming to you 20% off. If you use the code AP20 on rooted.com, that's R-O-O-T-D dot C-O-M. Use the code AP20 for 20% off. This is episode 180 of the Athletes Podcast featuring Alex Caron. Here we go. Well, let's. why don't we start there, Alex Caron? Caron am I saying it correctly? Caron? Yeah, not so bad. Caron. Yeah. Caron. Caron. I need to roll, uh, roll the R a little bit, but uh, that's my <laughs> elementary school French kicking in there. But... Uh, hey, I, I appreciate you coming on the Athletes Podcast as a multi-CrossFit Games athlete uh, representing Canada. I've been fortunate enough to watch you on TV, uh, been admiring your career journey so far. It's an honor to be able to chat with you on the Athletes Podcast today and to share your story because you've experienced some tumultuous times lately with things that have gone on in the CrossFit world. And I'll let you do a better job explaining what's occurred and sharing a bit about who you are here in these next couple minutes. Floor is yours, Alex. Thank you. So first, thank you for having me. Uh, so do you want me to introduce myself a little bit? Yeah, man. Like, why not? <laughs> who, you give, give a little background because I just said you're an incredible CrossFit Games athlete, um, but you should share a bit about your French background and the fact that you're Canadian and the fact that you continue to rep our nation proud and do it in such a like really good fashion. Yeah. So, uh, well, to begin, I think uh, it's worth men mentioning that as a true Canadian, uh, my sports background is hockey. So uh, I played hockey for nine years. Uh, and then I discovered CrossFit through hockey because uh, I was training in the summer for hockey. Uh, and then it just uh, continued to, uh, I just fell in love with CrossFit, I guess. Uh, and then I quit playing hockey to focus solely on uh, CrossFit. Uh, and I've been doing it for 10 years now. I started uh, on May 7th of uh, 2013. <laughs> you, you remember that workout down to that day, hey? Yeah, <laughs> I remember the workout. It was a running workout. Uh, I don't remember the name but it was a benchmark workout and it had a uh, mile run, uh, 21 clean and jerks, 800 meter run, 21 clean and jerks and a mile run. And uh, at that time I was running quite a bit. So uh, I really loved the workout and uh, well, I came back the next day and uh, the next day it was a bunch of uh, pull-ups 
and I couldn't do keeping pull-ups, so I was just doing them strict, and I had to use a band. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty humbling. It's uh, crazy to think about the transition you've made over the past ten years uh, to go from needing bands to do a strict pull-up to now competing on the world stage, and then also getting ripped off the world stage. Um, yeah. Let's talk about this. This is the reason why uh, we're chatting today because you would still be competing and we'd be talking about you standing on the podium here in a couple of weeks if it weren't for <laughs> what's happened. Um, Hopefully. Yeah, and, and I don't say that lightly because I know I've been following some of your training and I know you were really confident and feeling super positive about where you were headed this year. And it sucks for me to witness what happened. Um, you're not the only athlete that it's occurred to. And I'm going to let you share kind of the ins and outs because you're the person that went through it. Um, but I appreciate you letting me give this opportunity for you to, to give this because it's yeah. not uh, it's, thanks to you. Yeah. And it's not so, something I take uh, lightly. Well, I guess, uh, it all started on Monday of the week of our semifinal about three weeks ago. Uh, I was practicing test number two, uh, which was the one with the muscle ups with the rock pack. Uh, well, the, the workout itself was three rounds of uh, three minutes on and one minute, one, minute, one minute rest in between of five ring cup complexes, uh, 20 pistols or uh, one-legged squats, and then max burpee box jump over in the time remaining of the three minutes. Uh, and the ring complexes were, were uh, one toaster ring, one muscle up, and one dip. You had to do this five times. And then you, you could move on to the one-legged squats. Uh, so yeah, I was practicing this workout. And on the last round, I had two reps left and uh, I felt something in my left pec. So I just stopped right there because I didn't want to uh, aggravate it and not be able to compete four days later. Uh, so I, after that, I saw two physical therapists as soon as I could. Uh, they made a couple of tests on me to see what I could and couldn't do. And I also had the, uh, an ultrasound evaluation to uh, confirm that it was a grade one tear in my left pec. Uh, so I asked what was the risk of aggravating the injury. And they both told me that uh, with a movement as unstable as the ring muscle up and with a rock pack, uh, there was a very big chance of making it worse and that the uh, complete tear would mean an operation and six months of rehab. So basically, it really wasn't worth the risk. So uh, then I emailed CrossFit, the organization, to know if there would be any uh, minimum work requirement. And their response was that it was going to be briefed at the event. I thought that well, this was a bit odd because we were week one of three and the other two weeks would know about it. But that was the response. So after that, I tested every other movement of the competition, including the dumbbell bench press and the legless rope climbs, for example. And they felt OK. So I just I decided to take a chance on the minimum work based on past events and uh, not having any. And uh, I made the trip to Orlando to compete for a spot at the CrossFit Games. Uh, I had made different scenarios and I knew that qualifying despite getting last place on a workout was achievable. Uh, it was going to be tough, but I was ready for the challenge. So on Thursday, uh, the day before the competition started, we had our briefing and they told us that there was not going to be any minimum work requirement, just as I thought. But the only standard was to make an effort for the duration of the workout. So I thought, OK, that's fine. I'll just have to go on the floor and do some swings on the rings and I should be fine. Yeah. So, because after all, what's an effort, you know? So, uh, yeah, I was about to learn a bit more about the, about it. <laughs> so that part there, I, it's important that people realize, like, that's a subjective metric, your effort yeah. there. So the, at no point does it say there's any minimum work requirement. And the part that, like, you've done well, you track this all oh, you've got emails you've asked questions you ensured you checked your boxes you crossed your t's and you dotted your i's and there's actually like a youtube video by team richie i don't know if you've heard of him uh it's got like 180,000 views right now on youtube i was just watching it before this it's the only thing that's covered this anywhere on social i feel like that's done a video of it and it's perfectly articulated there so i'll link it in the comments for this future but 
like you have, and it was you and one other athlete, but you weren't required to do anything. And so there, no guidance given by the officials whatsoever there, even once you got on site. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just told you what they told us was that there was no minimum work. So basically we had to make an effort for the duration of the workout. But again, what's what's an effort? I just thought I had to jump on the rings and do some stuff and just act like I was doing something just to make an effort. But obviously that was not that was not enough. So So <laughs> yeah, so you and Corby both deal with this and sorry I cut you off. Go ahead. No, that's fine. <laughs> so uh, uh well, on Friday uh during the event uh, I, I did what I just told you. So I jumped on the rings and I did a toast to ring, uh, which was the first movement of the ring complex we had to do with the 20 pound uh, backpack. And then I just stood behind the rings. Not, uh, and I did not attempt any masala because it was too big of a risk, like I said. Uh, so at the end of round one, the head judge uh, came to me and uh, he said, so you're going to have to make a choice here. Either you make a valid effort or you retire. So at this point, I just thought, do you really think I'm going to retire? I just came here from Quebec. Like I made the whole trip to Orlando and I knew I had this injury coming in. I knew what I, I was going to, to have to deal with. Uh, and everything was going just as I had planned, you know. So obviously, I was not going to retire there. So I just replied that I was going to make an effort. And then round two began, I jumped on the rings for a toaster ring and dropped down. Then I just looked at the rings and I was like, okay, now I have to do something just to please them a little more, you know? So I jumped back on the rings and did a couple of kipping chest to bar pull-ups just to make a valid effort, I guess. <laughs> so every 40 seconds or so, I would jump on the rings and do a, do a pull. And then at that moment, I saw the head judge, uh, Chuck Carswell, and uh, Adrian Bosman, the director of the CrossFit Games, they were talking on the sidelines and they were pointing at me. So I thought, okay, clearly they don't like what I'm doing here, but what can they do? Like, they're going to send me to the medical staff for an, an evaluation and do the test that I did that I did with my physical therapist a couple of days ago to see if I'm medically able to continue to... Uh, compete so towards towards the end of uh, round two uh, the head judge came to me again and repeated that I had to make a choice either make a valid effort or retire again I told him I was gonna make a valid effort uh, and I guess one thing worth mentioning now is that there was another athlete a couple of lanes to my left who was not able to do a muscle up with the rock pack uh, the only difference was that he was definitely trying a bit more than I was. But honestly, I thought, what difference does it make? Like, if I was just not capable of doing the movement, I would be fine. So, there's no <laughs> to difference. me, it made no sense. Yeah, and you're right. You're absolutely right. There is no difference. Yeah, so, well... Uh, again, round three uh, begins and the same thing happens. I do my toast ring, I come down and then I look at the rings and I just thought, okay, what can I possibly do now to please them enough so that I can continue competing? So I just pulled a bit harder to my hips every time I jumped on the rings, every 40 seconds or so. And uh, at the end, the head judge told me to go see the medical team for an evaluation, just that I, as I thought would happen. Uh, the person in charge of the medical team uh, made me do a couple of tests, uh, the same ones I had done uh, a couple of days earlier, and uh, he told me I was good to go. So uh, at that point, I came back to the warm-up area, to my bag, and I told my girlfriend, who uh, is also uh, the one coming with me in every competition as a coach, <laughs> so uh, I told her, that it was fine and that it was time to fight for my spot to the games. Uh, I left the competition site that night feeling pretty happy and knowing very well what I had to do to claim one of the 12 spots to the games. But I thought my job during this event was done and I was going to be okay to continue competing. So 
on Saturday morning, uh, when I was warming up for test number three, uh, they called my name. But I wasn't sure if it was, if it was me because Caron in English doesn't sound too well. So I was not sure if they were calling me. <laughs> I just continued warming up for a couple of minutes and went to see what lane I was in on the whiteboard just beside the uh, athlete check-in. Uh, where many volunteers are doing different things. And one of them, of the uh, athlete control, came to me and he told me I had to go see the organization because they wanted to talk to me. So uh, I just told him I had to warm up because my heat was leaving in 15 minutes. Uh, he didn't say a word and uh, he just kept walking. So I knew something was wrong. Uh, we we arrived in a small room and the head judge, the, the head judge, the director, the responsible of the medical team and three other people were in there. And uh, it's Chuck, the head judge, that he, he told me that based on what they saw the day before, they were withdrawing me. Uh, that they didn't want to take a chance with an athlete who is clearly injured. And they also said that my effort was not good enough for a semi-final athlete. Uh, and that I had an unfair advantage over my competition going forward from not doing any work in test number two. So <laughs> I almost laughed when he said an advantage because I told him an advantage seriously from getting 59th place in a workout. I clearly have a big disadvantage I have to surmount. So what are you going to do with the other athletes who didn't do a repetition during the event? So they told me that they were not going to have this argument with me, but that their decision was final. Uh, I asked them if they had talked to the medical team and their response was that it wasn't for medical reasons. Uh, it was because of a lack of effort and because I had an unfair advantage. I thought, okay, so <laughs> now I understand. I don't have a say in this and you can just pull me out whenever you want, basically. So... I just left and uh, later I learned that uh, another guy in a very similar situation, which uh, is uh, Corby, uh, got pulled out by CrossFit too, but not by the medical team. So, yeah. For those, who are, yeah, for those who are just listening, um, I'm kind of shaking my head, closing my eyes, trying to wrap my head around how I would have felt in this situation, having just spent thousands of dollars, traveled thousands of kilometers, spent your entire year taking time off work, dedicated one day a week to work where you dedicated the rest of your time towards CrossFit and you're pulled out of an event, not because of medical, but because of a lack of effort, despite not being given the benefit of the doubt when you were abiding by the rules. Um, there's a quote here from CrossFit General Manager of Sport, Justin Berg, that I want to read now, which is interesting given what you just said. Yeah. Injuries are one of the hardest parts of sports. We strive to bring the best medical care to athletes during competition and to ensure a fair competition for the full field of athletes. Each stage of competition is intended to be completed in its entirety and an absolute an obviously a disappointing outcome for all of us when an injury prevents an athlete from being able to showcase what they've trained so hard for. So this is really interesting given that you were not pulled because of a medical issue. Um, the real unfortunate part is here is that it doesn't seem like anything's going to change because this has happened in the past. This happened to Corby Foxall as well. And you have, the best of the best within CrossFit, like Pat Vellner, Fitkowski, Justin Medeiros, commenting on your post saying, this is a joke, this shouldn't be happening, can't believe this is happening, yet it seems to be being swept under the rug. Yeah, that's, and that's the thing with CrossFit that's the most frustrating and sad, I, I believe, it's that they will never admit them, their mistake. and they rarely do something to prevent them from happening again in the future. So, yeah. And, well, as you said, s since when does CrossFit really care about the health of their <laughs> athletes? Like, I have many examples of the opposite, actually. I, I, they, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, well, it's just that in the past they glorified some athletes who competed injured. Uh, they made us lift on wet platforms in 2018 at the games, and uh, I end, ended up with a completely torn PCL and a strained MCL in my right knee. And uh, in 2021, we swam in a contaminated lake, uh, or if it was not com contaminated, it was in the days leading up to the event. So clearly the lake was not very clean. Uh, and yeah, so we were a couple of athletes who got sick and were barely able to continue competing through multiple visits to the bathroom. <laughs> so yeah, basically I, I, don't, I don't really think CrossFit cares that much about the athlete's health. Uh, and that's what they were trying to pass as a message, but clearly that's not the case. No, and I've also heard stories of others going through and um, sharing what it's like when you're at the games and them basically saying that you got to do whatever it takes for the games and it's it's for the greater good of just pushing through and making sure that you compete and do whatever it takes yet you end up with injuries when you have 455 pounds on your back in squatting on wet platforms and you have athletes swimming in contaminated lakes and I'm sure there's others we could pull up here pretty quickly on the internet um, wh why is it that this sport and I, I mean I'm asking you you're the one having to go through this like this sport that's now gained a ton of exposure people are loving the community aspect there's a ton of positives from CrossFit that can't be overstated but I think the fact of the matter is that this is a competition and you were eliminated or removed from it for subjective reasons and that's where I am frustrated, disappointed, whatever word you want to use to describe it, it sucks because you're now out of this and what is not your first time at the games. This is not, you know, you're 22, three, four year old where you're young and you have tons of opportunities, right? Like I'm sure this is you at the back half or in the middle of your career looking, Hey, I don't always have these opportunities. How do you like swallow this? What do you, what, what does your mentality look like going through? Yeah, this? well, I'm not the kind of person to dwell on anything really. So I just came back from that weekend and I immediately thought, okay, so what's going to happen for me next? And uh, I looked at the events that were coming up in the upcoming months. And then uh, I decided to uh, focus on the next competitions, which are uh, the Rogue Invitational, for example. And I know this event is very well run. So yeah. Basically, that, that was my reaction. I, I know I have no control over what happened and I can't change anything. So I'm just going to focus on what I can do next. Well, hopefully we can share stories like this and uh, this can impact change moving forward so that these mistakes don't happen to others and impact others negatively. We have a couple more audience questions. You okay to answer those first and then I'll we'll get those will lead into more fun ones. Um, so Patrick Labatt, asks what your favorite poutine is given that but you're my from favorite poutine <laughs> yeah from quebec do you have a favorite well uh i'd say that i haven't eaten a poutine in a long time <laughs> but my girlfriend really likes poutine and she has one almost uh, every other week uh and when i was young i was going to uh ashton which is a chain restaurant uh in quebec okay and i had one poutine almost every week uh and i really liked it <laughs> uh but recently i stumbled on one from uh, a small restaurant that's uh only fast food like uh homemade on the okay. corner of a street Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a corner and, uh, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. And uh, yeah. Cool. Is that, <laughs> what's your, do you have like a go to post meal, post workout meal, or like favorite food that you like to enjoy that's maybe not the healthiest outside of La Pute? Not really, but the one thing that I like the most uh, as a cheat meal, for example, is a pizza. Oh, okay. Are you a pineapple on it kind of guy or what? No, no, no. pineapple. <laughs> Bacon, that's it, with uh, all the rest. 
Bacon with all dressed. Okay, okay. I can get on board with that. That's not a bad little combination. Um, <laughs> keeping with the, the Canadian motto, uh, Montana McMullen is wondering who you like better, Brett or Pat? Brent or Pat? Yeah. <laughs> mm, I like them both. Uh, I'd say I know Pat a little bit better because yeah. uh, I used to compete against him even before he was going to the games. Uh, I competed against him since 2014, basically. So I, I've known him for quite a while. And uh, he's beaten me. Uh, he, he beat me in many competitions. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, he's over on Vancouver Island, actually, I think, where a uh, bunch of my family is, and we just completed a triathlon, Phoenix and I, a little sprint triathlon, uh, which kicked our butts. Um, and it, it brings up a question. Given that CrossFit has so many different modalities, you're like constantly training, you're swimming, you're resistance training, do you have a, a favorite workout that you like to do? We just had Memorial Day with the Murph. Do you have a specific routine or a specific exercise that gets you going? Mm. That's a very good, good question. I don't really have a favorite workout, but I really enjoy uh, any workout that has a machine in it. Mm. So bike or uh, rowing or uh, running. Uh, I really enjoy uh, all the cardio stuff. Interesting. <laughs> it's interesting because you're like a, a bigger guy. So I would assume that cardio wouldn't be your favorite thing to do. Have you always been good at cardio? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like every time I go in a competition, everyone assumes that I'm going to be the big lifter. But I don't personally think that I'm one of the strongest competitors in a competition. My my cardio was always better in my eyes than my strength. So I had always had to work very hard on my, on the strength stuff to get better. It's, uh, anything that you've found that helps with the strength, you have specific routines. Is it a five by five? Do you work on hypertrophy? Are you working strength more like anything that you can give our audience there who are maybe some younger listeners or people who are middle-aged who are wanting to maybe add some more muscle, make sure that they keep their bodies in shape? Yeah, well, uh, to me, if you want to gain strength and get stronger and faster, uh, you have to focus on your total training volume. So you don't have to do too much because whenever I train a lot for a, an upcoming competition my strength is going to go down a little bit but every, everything else is going up so when i want to focus on my strength a bit more i know i have to uh, bring my total training volume up, down a little bit and just focus on my strength obviously yeah i have to compliment you your english is very good i uh i'm bilingual and je peux parler le français un petit peu and i didn't know whether i was going to need to pull out some french to maybe balance for you but you're doing a good job man thank you <laughs> no, i hope uh, people understand me <laughs> i i'm sure they will have you is this your first like how many podcasts have you done have you, any in french english like what's the split been uh yeah i did a couple in french maybe two or three and two or three in english also okay okay it's a pretty even split I'm curious, like for you growing up in Canada from Quebec, who were the athletes that you looked up to that you idolized or wanted to be like growing up? Well, obviously the first one when I started, I started in 2013. So at that time it was Rich Froning mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a Mayhem athlete also. That's the training camp that I, I'm training under. Uh, it was the, the guy that I was looking up to and the... Uh, well, for his person, like his leadership and how he moved and as an athlete, uh, how he trained. So that's what the, that, that was the guy I was looking up to. Uh, and then I discovered uh, Ben Smith not so long after that. And uh, I really like the, the guy, too. He's, uh, he's a bit of a, I wouldn't say an underdog, but like he... He's not that expressive, 
but uh, I really like the, his personality and how he moves as an athlete also. So yeah, those were the two guys I was looking up to when I started. How important is it now to have to be that personality and be expressive and showcase some personality? And like we see it in UFC now, guys are literally paid based on how much interaction they get on social media and their contracts literally have it included. CrossFit, kind of similar. It's an individual sport. There's a community aspect, but like you're kind of also given additional exposure based on how much you generate yourself. Do they talk to you about that? Do they suggest maybe, hey, start creating more content online, jump on more podcasts? Like, is there anything like that out there to say, hey, like, continue building your brand? No, not really. Uh, CrossFit doesn't help a lot with that stuff, but I guess we we all we have to do uh, our own stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's how it works now. Uh, I guess you have. If you if you're extra uh, extroverted, mm-hmm. is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. So that that helps a lot. But the thing is, I believe that many athletes are introverted at at first. So yeah, b- becoming extroverted is is difficult so, uh, for many athletes. For sure, we we just had Mitchell Hooper on, and I say that he was the 165th episode, but world's strongest man recently crowned. And we talked about it during that episode. Like he wasn't super extroverted going through university. Like it wasn't something that came naturally to him. Obviously he's worked at it and progressed, but now, you know, he just eclipsed or if not, he's about to hit a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. It's been 40 K since we had him on the pod. Like, and that happens exponentially. And that's just because he's putting in that work and he knows, Hey, I need to do this. And now that I can say I'm the world's strongest man, people are going to be following that journey. And like now that's available for CrossFit athletes too, providing they don't, don't get it stripped away by the, uh, the brand that's promoting them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Rogue Invitational, let's look at the positives. You've got that coming up. How are you feeling? Like what's the body feeling like? How are you training right now? I think people would love to learn kind of what your daily routine looks like from a nutrition training standpoint. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I'm doing pretty good now. Uh, like I said, uh, I decided to uh, reduce my workload lo- workload this year and just work one day a week to focus more on CrossFit. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, and right now, I'm focusing more on my strength. So uh, I do one session, maybe two, se- sometimes two sessions. But uh, maybe three days a week, I will do uh, one session only per day and then uh, three more days where I will do two sessions. Uh, and yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, Rogue Invitational. Uh, in fact, I, I asked them if there was going to be a qualifier this year for their competition. And they told me that, yes, there was going to be one in August, probably. So uh, we'll see. That's going to be my... My next uh, goal, that's for sure. I love that. You asked them if there were any minimum work requirements and if there were rings involved? (laughs) No, (laughs) not yet. (laughs) But usually Rogue, like I said, is very well run and uh, we're going to know what we're going to get into. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, that's what you should expect at the professional level. There shouldn't be surprises around the door when you get to an event after you've, like I said, spent those thousands of dollars, traveled across the world. Um. What do you do outside of CrossFit, man? Like, I feel like you could spend hours in the gym on a daily basis, but you still need to rest, recover. I know your girlfriend and you are very tight. She did actually ask whether you love your girlfriend on our Instagram. So I have to ask you whether you do love her. <laughs> Giving you a fastball down the I middle. Her, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we do, uh, we do some activities together. We, we love to go uh, hiking. Uh, but it's been a while actually, so uh, we're gonna be due to to go some, to do some hiking. Uh, we see some, uh, our friends uh, often, and uh, yeah, so uh, that's basically what I do when uh, I have some some time on my hands. Uh, and the other part of my life is uh, 
taking care of my lawn care business so uh, with my clients and it's just in this during the summer so during the winter i'm a hundred percent crossfit uh, the i the reason i ask is because i we have that in common so i grew up cutting lawns that was my way to make money so i have yeah, yeah i did that from i think 12 or 13 i bought my first lawnmower i got a loan from my dad so I had my lawnmower for a couple of years, paid it off with him, and like that was my summer job, and that's how I afforded to buy a truck, and then that led to being able that's to nice. afford to sell the truck and go to school, right? And like, but it's very lucrative, and you can stay active, fit outside, getting vitamin D. It's great, and I think like the fact that you have a business on the side that you're able to manage both is phenomenal, and I think shining light on the fact that you're able to do this is incredible, and I think one of the things I want to sh- highlight is like, hey you're not only an athlete, but you're an entrepreneur, you're a business person, right? And at the end of the day, there are a lot of synergies there. Where do you see the biggest connections between sport and business? Because this is something that everyone sees over time. Is there specific, is it routines for you? Is it waking up in the morning and having specific X, Y, Z tasks that you get from sport that you can now attribute to work? Or where do you see those connections? Well, I believe that the the main the main connection between these two is uh, having a drive and uh, like enjoying the process of developing developing something over many years, and not uh, like enjoying the long term over the short term uh, pleasures, as I'd say. So, yeah, so sometimes there are many sacrifices to make in the beginning, but when you, you know where you're headed, uh, I guess it's easier. And uh, yeah, so I'd say the, the main connection between these two is having a focus and uh, discipline and knowing where you want to go and not letting people dictate what you should do. Well said. Um... I have to ask, what position did you play in hockey growing up? Uh, center. Center, okay. Yeah. And then any other sports growing up? Uh, yeah, I played uh, soccer when I was young for nine years also. And uh, I quit playing soccer because hockey was becoming too big of a, like too, too much time consuming. Uh, and I played badminton too. And the... Uh, a fun fact is that I had to choose between uh, because I had a, uh, a school that we had uh, we could do a sport during half of the day and uh, school the other half of the day. I don't know how you call it. Uh, like we call it a sportitud. Like a, yeah, I don't know how to say it in English. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> but, that's right. Uh, and I had to choose between uh, badminton and hockey. Because uh, I had gotten uh, a scholarship, uh, well, a part of my of the the bill was paid. Yeah. Uh, because I had won the badminton tournament, so I had to choose between hockey and badminton. No and way. Obviously, I chose hockey. <laughs> Small. I can't believe you chose hockey over badminton as a kid from Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Who uh, did you have a favorite hockey player growing up? Hmm. Uh, not really. Uh, I'm not very a big uh, fanboy, okay. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had many uh, players that I was looking up to, like uh, Sidney Crosby, Alex Ovechkin, uh, Steven Stemkos. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not one in particular. Yeah, yeah. The uh, your Quebec Ramparts just won the Memorial Cup, actually. Yeah. Uh, shout out to them. That just happened. So. Uh, yeah, with uh, Patrick Roy. Yes, exactly. Uh, hey, just while we're on the subject of hockey, you got to get it in there. We're a sports podcast, you know. Um, I always like to ask, is there something that people don't know outside of that fun fact that you just shared with badminton? Like, if I was to fast forward 10 years from now and ask you and work, get you back on the show in person, because that's the way I want to do episodes in the future is making sure everyone's, you know, talking face to face. But... What is like 10 years from now look like for Alexander Caron? Are there specific goals in mind? 
<laughs> I'm not one to look that that much forward. Uh, I live in the present. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know what's the, what the future holds, to be honest. Uh, right now, my goal is to focus on CrossFit, like I said. And uh, I will also focus on my business. But uh, I don't know where I'll be down the line. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I love it. I love it. Hey, well, I wish you the best of luck. I can't wait to be able to talk with you and continue these conversations because I think it's important. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story here a bit about what's happened over the past month. I know you said that there were other mistakes that they've made. Is there anything else that you want to share, highlight right now, since you have this opportunity? Well, like I said, I'm not one to dwell on anything, so I don't really want to focus on the negatives. And uh, But yeah, basically, the, the thing that I, I find sad a little bit about CrossFit is that, like I said, they won't ad admit their mistake and they just continue making mistakes. And yeah, so I just hope that my situation and someone else's situation will help make changes in the future and make sure that the sport grows better and uh, bigger. You're doing it right now. And you're like you said, the sport is going to get bigger and better. And it's because of people like you um, doing what you're doing, sharing your story. And uh, I appreciate you being forward and willing to do this uh the way we wrap up every episode alex as you know is we ask our guests what their biggest piece of advice would be for the next generation of athletes having spent a decade in the crossfit space whether it's personal professional nutrition based physical training based mental based whatever the case may be is there one piece of advice you want to leave the athletes podcast audience with uh i'd say it's pretty cliche but uh, find something you love and stick to it. And uh, even uh, on the bad days, just continue uh, getting at it and uh, the good days will come. I love it. Alex, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Uh, this is a fantastic conversation. I can't wait to meet up in person. We'll get a workout in in Quebec or something or we'll get you out to the West Coast, okay? <laughs> of course. I look forward to it. Hey, I hope you have a great rest thank of your you day. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you. Hey, just want to say thank you for tuning in to the 180th episode of the Athletes Podcast. Big shout out goes out to Alex for coming on the show, sharing his story, being open, honest, willing to share exactly what's gone on throughout his career in the sport of CrossFit. It's unfortunate what's occurred. My best wishes go to him in his future events. We're going to be following along his journey, obviously. As Canadians, you know, we're going to be here to support each and every one of you moving forward. I appreciate you folks for tuning into this episode that's brought to you by Rooted. Again, AP20, 20% off. Get your vitamins. Easy to use, take, travel with, pouches. AP20, 20% off at rooted.com. They're our sponsor for the episode. A big shout out also goes to Phoenix Whalen, the woman behind the camera, video, editor, and producer. I'm your host, David Stark. Thank you folks for tuning in to this episode of the Athletes Podcast. We'll see you next week. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.